the introduction. Thank you for joining us tonight for the Parent Leadership Academy, and our subject is how to write nonfiction. Tonight we have with us again Bianca Strong. She is a product of ABC Unified. She attended Whitman School. She currently teaches there. Over 16 years of experience teaching second, third, and transition kindergarten. She has a credential and a master's from USC, a loving eight-year-old daughter, and a particularly needy chihuahua. We're very excited to have her here tonight, and I will turn this over to Mrs. Strong. Thank you. Hi, how is everyone tonight? Hope you're doing well. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. I appreciate it. I hope everyone is doing well. I love to see cameras on. I love to see faces. So if you are comfortable with putting your camera on, I, I love that. I like to engage with people and I want you to feel comfortable to participate too. Um, in the past, obviously this is something that we would do in person on site and hopefully we'll be able to get to that soon. Uh, but for now, um, as much as we can interact with each other, it's just really important. It's important for our kids as well. So. Feel comfortable, if, if you don't want to put the camera on, at least feel comfortable to um, unmute and speak and share. Uh, there is no wrong question. There is no wrong comment. We want to value all of that, and we absolutely want to hear from you, okay? So just at any time, if um, obviously if your camera's off and I can't see, like if you're raising your hand, you can type in the chat box and say, I have a question, can I unmute? Or you can unmute and, you know, I can stop and, and please, you can absolutely start talking okay because I really want you to be able to participate and share and stop me at any time questions arise. Having said that please use the chat box to type in questions as we progress this evening. Um, if there if you didn't attend last week and have questions about that or maybe just something related or a comment please we really would love to um, hear from you okay and I'm going to do my best to share um, things as well, because I'm a parent too. So, and, and I'm a parent of a child in ABC as well. So I'm going through and experiencing things that you may be as well or have um, on the other side. So I, I kind of get it twofold of, as a teacher and, and from the parent perspective too. So I don't want you to think that I'm not understanding and even being a teacher doesn't necessarily make it easier, sometimes can make it more challenging. I'm sure if you would ask my daughter, it makes it much more challenging. <laughs> because I'm just, it's hard to separate the two. <laughs> Anyhow, so last week we started off with the um, foundations for writing and we went over the foundations of reading as well. And we sort of discussed how important reading is because it, that's what plays such a huge role in writing or any subject matter for that fact. So having a knowledge base for reading and really understanding the foundations for that and, and trying to find a pleasure with it is really going to make an impact on the writing. So if you have an opportunity to be able to access that from last week, I know they probably would be um, resources available online and you can contact the adult school to get that as well. I really encourage you to be able to take a look at that if you have time to do so or look at the PowerPoint. And if you have questions about that, you can feel free to email me or reach out to somebody from the adult school. And I'm sure we'd be more than happy to try to um, help, assist, answer questions that we can, okay? I can have a tendency to talk fast. <laughs> um, I was in debate in high school. So I really like, if I was timed with two minutes, I had to get everything I wanted to say out in two minutes. So it's sort of st stuck with me in a sense. Uh, but I don't wanna talk so fast that, something gets lost or it wasn't necessarily clear. So please do stop me if, if that happens because I do try to be mindful of that, okay? Before I'm gonna share my PowerPoint with you guys, go ahead and share my screen. Make sure I have two screens open it. I'm doing this from home too. So I have two screens open and that way I'm able to um, engage and kind of see everybody here as well and, and take a look at our uh, look here. Okay, so tonight we have the foundation to building a foundation writing how to write nonfiction. Okay, so we're going to focus on this a little bit more in this particular genre, nonfiction, which this would be something factual, right? True, our expository informative text. Okay, so we're going to delve a little bit more into this for this evening. And 
And thank you for the introductions, a little bit about me. I appreciate that. So just a quick recap from last week. As I said, we kind of talked about the foundations of reading and the roots of reading. That's your, your basis, right? What you sort of need to know, what the foundations are of that. Think of like a tree, what's a tree built on, what it's made of. That's why we kind of use that word, word for that choice, root, the roots of it. And then the routes, which kind of looks, sounds a little similar, not quite. The routes, it's your directions, right? Your path. How am I gonna get to this to be more successful? So if you did attend last week and were able to join us, did you find, I put a couple questions here, did you find anything to try from some of the suggestions or strategies? Did you kind of make note of what might be working? Were there some challenges? Did you try using something and felt it to be a little useful? Please feel free to type in the chat if you were able to do that. Don't be shy. If you type something in, it's not like we'll call out your name or anything. So I don't want you to feel like um, if I if we ask that, that we'll necessarily say that. But it's just great to hear from each other. Okay, so feel free to share. And if for the foundations of writing now specifically, did you find anything that was working in that? Any challenges? Any strategies you tried that you felt were helpful? No one. Well, one thing I can share that I do, um, that I kind of find helpful, it's not necessarily writing, but it's talking. And we kind of touched the base on that as well too, with reading and talking. When we're using our words and we're using language, when we're having a discussion, when you're engaging with someone, that is so powerful because you're increasing their vocabulary, you're increasing their confidence, you're using terminology, you're using language, right? We're having a discussion and that's going to improve writing because they're learning how to share details verbally. If you can't explain something and share details verbally, imagine how difficult that could be to get that on paper. Right. So it's important when you want to brainstorm. That's why I find a lot of students who have difficulty or challenges with writing or they don't like to read. Those are usually students that if you ask them a question verbally, they do so well with explaining and giving their details and suggestions, their ideas, their creativity. I mean, it's amazing, right? Because they're so good verbally. So we want to use that and how and help them to have the tools to get that down on paper. So I, I think that having discussions are really a great way to start. And something we do at home sometimes, um, and I just got these from like, I'm sure many go to like, fast, once in a while we go to Chick-fil-A. And one of the toys that came with it, and you can get these online too, was like little dinner games. And I love these because when we sit around at dinner, you know, you can ask questions, right? other than just how was your day, but maybe something that you go around, everybody at the table takes a turn telling something new they learned or did today. That's great. Or, I mean, it can be anything. You don't even have to have these kinds of cards. You can look up questions, but just try to have those moments where you're engaging with everyone because you wanna get in the habit of having a regular uh, use of language, okay? We wanna have a, get in the habit of using, maybe there's terms or vocab that's in their grade level. Let's say they have spelling tests that week. Like my daughter has spelling tests every week. She has vocab tests every week. I try to find discussions where I can include that vocab or spelling words in because that will help her to recall the word. It might help her to recall the meaning or the definition. So anytime you can use whatever it is they're learning as part of your day-to-day -day routine, try to find those little moments. It's not extra work. If anything, it's subconsciously helping them to be more successful without them knowing it, but you know it. Anyhow, that's just maybe a little tip to try. We also mentioned last week as well that um, to possibly check in with the classroom teacher or teachers if there's more than one, if you had an opportunity to do that. Were you able to take some time to ask for some support from their school? Is there somebody else that could be of a resource to them, a resource specialist if needed? Do they have um, any challenges other than 
you know, maybe they're just not doing as well on a subject or is it vision, hearing? Um, it, those are things that are important and it can impact their, their learning as well. My daughter has a 504 for vision. She um, has a form of astigmatism that just, even with glasses, cannot get 20-20 vision. So it's really um, challenging with some subjects and we have to make sure that we get her materials that she can see. So I've also found that since we've been online, since we've been home with, with our new learning, uh, many more kids are suffering from, from vision. And it's good to get things like that checked that can help with reading and writing. Okay, so those just might be some suggestions to check. Um, were you able to try anything with changing their environment, uh, their background? maybe have establishing a routine, any tools or materials. Okay, just some things to think about. Don't feel shy. If you have any questions before we begin or anything we can do to encourage and support your participation. I wish there was like a game or something. If we were in person, we could have prizes for like participation effort. <laughs> But okay, so stop me if you do have questions as we progress, okay? All right, well, right now I am gonna ask that you kind of try to participate a little bit and think about this. I would like your support in the chat box if you can. I want you to think about this activity here for yourself, okay? Start with this first question for yourself. What is your favorite genre to read? Like, What is your favorite type of book? Do you prefer biographies? Do you like to read short stories? Do you like to read poetry? Do you like to read romance, um, science fiction? Your personal favorite, what, what do you enjoy reading? Okay. And this is a safe zone, no judgment. Everybody share science fiction now because I like science fiction. I like lots of different things. It's hard to pick just one. It's like movies when somebody asks you what kind of movie do you like? I like lots of different kinds. Awesome, series. Okay, I, that's cool. Yeah, books that can be series. Absolutely. Awesome, those are great messages. Informational, good. Fantasy, cool. Thank you. Thank you everyone for responding. I appreciate that. So there are lots of great series books out there. That's true. And you know what's really cool? There's lots of great series books that are for kids. And I'll be honest, I mean, I'm, an, I'm a very old adult. <laughs> I really, really am very old. I feel very old. And I love the Harry Potter series. I mean, I stayed up like three in the morning finishing those and I would cry. I mean, I love books that can just make you feel so many emotions. And I love those. And those are kind of a younger series. I read the Twilight series. So I don't have to associate an age with it. I mean, I think you should just be open to try it. And it's cool because as the older kids get, they can join with you when you read those series. The Percy Jackson series are kind of cool. Yeah, awesome, Harry Potter. Yeah, that's cool. Well, thank you, those of you sharing and feel free to keep sharing as, as we go on. It's good to see all this. I appreciate you responding. Now, think about your child. What does your child like to read? If they do enjoy, it? well, I, sometimes parents will say, oh, my kid doesn't like to read. There's there probably is something they do like or they like being read to them. So kind of think about what it is they like. Keep the cat. They're older. If it's something more science fiction, think about what your child likes. Lots of kids like comics. What do they prefer? So type that in if you know. Land of stories. Jackson fantasy science fiction awesome yeah I just recently actually last summer got into the Percy Jackson that was cool Apollo cool definitely keep sharing these are great I love seeing your responses short stories including pictures and stuff. yep good absolutely 
I think illustrations are great. Stories with pictures are awesome. And especially for our younger learners, that's a, a great way for them to understand comprehension because you use the pictures to be able to answer questions with them. So absolutely, it helps to gauge learning. Captain Underpants. I have never read any of them, but I, I know lots of kids like it. <laughs> they, they're very silly. But I do know some of the Pete the Cat. I've read some of those. Cool. Anyone else want to share anything? Anything different? I like to read cookbooks too, because I like to cook, so I like to read recipes, and that counts as reading. Newspapers, it's kind of not as common anymore, but some people still read newspapers. If you read, if you're reading something um, faith related or Bible, that absolutely counts as well. Whatever it is that helps you to want to engage in that process, it's great. Okay, so let's think about some of the similarities. Is there something that we kind of noticed that might be in correlation from some of these responses? I kind of noticed maybe. Um, there was some similarity with the fantasy, sci-fi, and series. I kind of noticed there were some adults and, and kids that might have responded to both, which is great. And I like children's books too. I love to read children's books that have illustrations to my younger one. I always like that too. Okay, if you want to unmute and ever want to speak out and share, please feel free to do so. Okay, if you do, like I said, feel free. If you do want to unmute, you can do that. Sorry if you could hear that. That's my obnoxious chihuahua in the background. <laughs> Always likes to make an appearance. Okay, so let's take a look and move on here. What is nonfiction, right? Material that's factual or expository text, right? It's based on real accounts, informational text, something without bias. What does that mean? That means it's something that's not imparting an opinion. It's not taking a stance, it's not taking a side, it's not trying to persuade you to think something, it's giving you just factual information. So in other words, if there is a book about dinosaurs, giving factual information about dinosaurs, okay? That would be an example of nonfiction. You're just getting facts about dinosaurs. If I decided to write a children's book and say, this is about a T-Rex named so, you know, uh, David, and he is the best dinosaur ever. Well, that's not necessarily nonfiction now, right? This is a fantasy book. Even though a dinosaur really did live, this is not a nonfiction because I'm not providing facts. I'm using something that was factual in creating a, a story that isn't true, okay? So it's just important to note the difference with the context. So the context for nonfiction is just, is strictly factual. There is no opinion within it. There's no taking a position on the information. Okay, so it is something factual. It is something true. Yes, it is, yes. You are correct, Abhinav. It is true, real facts means true. Yep, you got it. So some examples are encyclopedias, newspapers, textbooks, things you use in class, biographies, cookbooks, directions, how-to books. These are just a few examples. If you can you think of something else that maybe is not listed here? There are some websites, okay, credible websites that would be considered feasible to use if you're using them for um, information to write something or sources. All right, I will move on. So, student purpose here. What should they do? What to do first? Well, what your purpose is as a student when you're presented with a writing prompt or nonfiction, and what are you going to do first? So, they need to first make sure they are reading the text or text. So, for example, often, especially as they progress in grade levels, they may be asked to respond to a writing prompt, but they are given two different passages. So they would have to read one passage and then the other before they can respond to the question. 
Okay, so that's why I put that in parentheses because it just depends. It, it gets more challenging as they progress from grade levels. You wanna make sure you're referring to the prompt. So your students should always make sure that when they're trying to map out how they're gonna respond, when they're brainstorming, when they're getting their ideas out, please make sure that you go back to the prompt and look at this and ask yourself, what are they asking me to do? Because sometimes I think, um, and we do this as adults, I can do this too. I can maybe go off on a tangent and start thinking ideas and wanting to respond something and then remind myself, wait a minute, what is the question asking me? I'm, I'm kind of not sticking to my goal here of what the question is asking me to respond to. And I'm going off on a different you know, path here. So I need to redirect myself. So make sure you kind of refer back and know that your focus is clear. If possible, I'll highlight, underline, circle related info. You don't need to know all of information, but you want to make sure that you know the information that is needed to support your response. A prompt is a writing prompt when they're in class. That's what uh, we refer to these, the district will give them writing prompts, even in TK. So the prompt is, it's kind of like a question. Okay, so we call them writing prompts. Thank you, Avanav. I see that, yes, read the passage, have a graphic organizer like your brainstorm, write your rough draft, and then you want to edit, absolutely. So your writing prompt is going to be the response. Okay. It's going to usually be something that they're going to be graded on. There's an objective. That's where they get their scores, one, two, three, four. Okay. Now, what to write? What is it you should be writing? Well, in any type of write, for a writing prompt, now, this is not a short answer question, but any type of a writing prompt, you want to make sure that you have an opening statement, okay? You really want to make sure you're opening this up with a response to the question. So if the question is asking you something, uh, what makes a better pet, a cat or a dog, your opening statement wants to include that, right? I believe a cat is a better pet here are my reasons why. So I'm opening this up with being able to respond to what the question is, very generally speaking. Make sure that you have introduced the purpose of the paper. Okay, so you're, you're letting the reader know what you're gonna be sharing. You're telling the reader, here's what I'm gonna talk to you about and here's gonna be my reasons, okay? Then that's where you provide evidence. You wanna make sure that you're using details, facts, information from the passages or text that you're responding to, you wanna make sure you're citing that. That means using quotations and citing it appropriately or whoever said something, you're including that and you're citing that resource, okay? Because that's your evidence. It can't just be your opinion, especially when you're working with nonfiction. This is something factual. So you have to find those facts and make sure you include that with your uh, response. Okay. All right, let me move on here. I'm doing, uh, hold on, I'm going to read this in the chat just for a quick sec. I'm doing a nonfiction about spiders in school. Oh, cool. That sounds fun. What grade are you in, Abhinav? Fourth. Oh, fourth. Nice. Where do you go to school? Whitman. Oh, are you Whitman? Awesome. Cool. Oh, I see you now. Yeah, I've seen you before. How are you doing? I haven't had you in my class, but I do recognize you. Nice to see. thank you for joining us. So yes, that would be something factual. So if he's if you're writing a story, I mean a response about uh, spiders, you're including factual information about these spiders, right? Things about them, maybe perhaps the types, where they live, what do they eat, their habitat. All all of those kinds of things would be facts. Okay, so now we're gonna have another little activity in the chat. I want you to think of a topic, something nonfiction, okay? That means true. Think of something true and take five minutes, your table, wherever you're sitting, just write a real quick statement about it. Think of three pieces of evidence. So I don't want you to have to go up and look for an encyclopedia. You don't have to go and find a resource for this. When I'm thinking about this, like you can use actual facts for something. For example, a topic of nonfiction. If I think about my obnoxious dog. Okay, 
so I have a dog, right? That's a fact. He's a, he's an animal. This is a true thing. I would have to think of three pieces of evidence though, to talk about my dog. Dogs have four legs, dogs bark, right? Those are facts. Those are truth statements. So don't think that it has to be something really tough or elaborate, just easy, quick. Just give me a quick statement, three things about it, just like that. And Tom Brady refers from football. <laughs> okay, that's true. So you could say three things about that, right? What did he do? Did he give a statement on TV about it? People are upset. His teammates were unhappy. And then just think of a closing statement for it, right? The team plans to be stronger and, and keep practicing in his honor. So you could say that, but you just want to make sure that you're including something that happened as a result. Like if you saw this on TV or you read this in an article. Anybody want to share anything? He saw it on the news. Okay, okay cool. That, then that counts as your evidence. Do you remember what was said or what they mentioned? Abhinav, can you tell us, um, you're writing about spiders. Can you tell us three things about spiders? Well, it's, uh, well I'm doing it about like spiders' adaptations. So, okay. like, one of the facts is, like, that they have venom that they inject into the insect to make sure it's dead. And then they dribble uh, digestive juices on it, and it turns it inside of the insect to see. And then so they can just drink it at all. Nice. <laughs> it's very detailed. <laughs> I find it a lot at school. So what would be a, a quick conclusion you could state about this? Like your closing uh, sentence? Probably in conclusion, uh, spiders have many adaptations that help them survive. There you go. Awesome. Thank you for sharing verbally too. You don't have to, to type it in the chat, but you can share verbally. Somebody wrote, I have a brother. Okay, I have a brother too. So you would have to think of three things. What are evidence to show that he's a brother, right? So I could say, I have a brother. Um, my brother is a male. Uh, think about things that would identify it for a brother. Right? I mean, you'd have to be a little more specific because that could be a little general. So you have to make sure with nonfiction it is something true because it may not be true for everybody, right? I have a brother, but not everybody would necessarily have a brother. So it would have to be something more specific in its reality for everyone else. Like it could be something specific as in a male or female, right? Because those are specific differences that anybody could relate to. But saying I have a brother, not everybody could relate to that, right? So you have to be really careful with that part. Okay. Okay. He's in fourth grade. So that is a fact about your brother. He's in fourth grade and he loves his teacher. Those are facts, yes. And these and this is fluid too, because things like this with emotions and that, some of that, that could be fluid and it could change as well, right? So think about something that could be relatable to everyone, right? In terms of nonfiction, because if I look up a text or check something out that I want to find information about, I can't necessarily check that kind of information out, right? We can study ESL. Yes, absolutely. We can study, that's great. And ABC Adult School provides lots of resources to support ESL learners. That would be a piece of evidence. The adult school provides um, teachers and staff that work with students and, and people wanting to participate, right? That could be another piece of evidence, okay? 
because those would be your facts, right? And then in conclusion, uh, ABC Adult School could provide great resources for students wanting to learn, study ESL. Okay. So don't think that it has to be so detailed or you have to think and come up with something so broad. I'm just trying to get you in a habit of thinking of something small and learning to just keep it minimal and we can expand and build from there. Okay. So that's the purpose of kind of having these little activities. The more we can kind of practice and engage with this, the more you'll be successful at being able to respond to larger uh, questions and short responses and then prompts, essays. All right. So let's take a look here at the steps to write. When we are writing, we want to make sure, and Albanov mentioned this for us before too, you have your brainstorm. That means we're thinking about our ideas first. So when I know, when I was a student or even when I've taken classes as an adult and I'm presented with something to respond to, I, I will take notes. I'm often writing down, I might even draw something, words, whatever it is, map it out, draw a bubble, circle map, whatever works for you, write down those ideas. Okay, because that's what you want to have clear in front of you. And the purpose of writing them down is I can sometimes have a good memory. I can't remember everything, right? And, and you shouldn't expect to. You shouldn't put that on yourself to have to remember it. Write it down. Not only would you possibly forget something, it helps to spark and think of other things to connect. It also helps to cross out when you rethink and clear focus to not use certain things that you might have thought would be helpful initially. Okay, so it's really, really a useful tool to brainstorm, use a graphic or organizer thinking map. If you're not sure what that means, oftentimes at schools or different grade levels, they use um, terms like graphic organizers or thinking maps or bubble maps. Those are the kinds of things um, Back in the day I grew up with where you have the circle, which is your main idea in the middle of the big circle, and then lots of these little circles that sort of spawn out on the sides that are like the little details about it. That's an example of one, but there are so many different ones out there. Okay, so, but it is very useful. Those are free. You can download them online. I would encourage you to ask your classroom teachers to help provide some to support. Okay, so just think about that going forward. And then make sure to write a rough draft, okay? That means your first run at this. After you have your all your ideas out, you wanna say, okay, let me try to write this out now. Have my opening statement, kind of put some of my ideas together, conclusion. And that's where you have your first rough draft, taking a look at it. Obviously, this is something you wanna go through, make sure you have your evidence, do you need to edit anything? Check for errors, spelling, okay? Make sure there's your conclusion. And then revise. Now revise is not the same thing as editing. Editing means you're checking for errors. You're maybe looking to see if the, something was not grammatically correct. Is this, does it sound okay? I always say to someone, say something out loud, read it out loud, because when you hear it, it's very different than when you read it. And I often find that people will correct more grammatical errors when they speak and say it out loud versus if they just read it. So it's really a useful tool to do that. But when you're revising something, that's where you might be taking something out. Like, you know what? This detail doesn't really go here. It's not supporting the prompt. I don't want to use this. I, I kind of want to switch things around and maybe include something different. So revising revision is different than editing. Okay. But it's important as well because sometimes we include information that's not necessary and it's not supportive of your goal. Now you may think, well, is that really a big deal if I include additional information? It's not bad, I'm including more writing. Well, it's not that it's not bad. What, what's not helpful about it is if someone is reading and grading this prompt and you're including information that's not necessarily supporting your response, it takes away from it. So it's not going to give it a more successful score when it's not something that's supporting your prompt. 
So that's where I would say that it is helpful to think about revision. Okay. Oh, good. You did your graphic organizer out loud. Your teacher's going to be happy. <laughs> awesome. He's showing his. All right. And this is a, a website that could be of use to you if you ever want to use that. I mean, there's lots of resources and websites out there, but this is a, a good one to use too to find some of those. Now, when you want to begin a search, let's say you're looking up information to find um, sources for your response or prompt and you need to find these facts, our district website is a great resource. So I encourage you as parents, part of the community, to absolutely access the website. Go there. I use it as a parent as well and, and find information if I need. Type in, under search, type in writing prompts. They often have a lot of information for different grade levels that could be useful to you to support you in your search. Okay, so I definitely suggest starting with us. And then you can absolutely broad, broaden that search and go somewhere else. Yes, educace.com. Thank you, make sure. Okay, and multiple grade level resources, there's links, different things to take you there as well. Okay, I'm gonna have to check that when we're done. I will check that and make note of that. Thank you. Okay, that's possible. We will check that. Thank you. But definitely go to the uh, district website. That is not default, I promise. <laughs> and they do have lots of um, connected sites that they will take you to as well. And they do have it with different grade levels that you can also use. Okay. Also, for on teacher pay teachers, um, you don't have to be a teacher to use teachers pay teachers, and you don't have to pay for anything on that site. I use lots of resources on that site that are free. You would just go there and click on the box that says free, and you can pull up um, tons of free resources on there for any grade level. So definitely take use of that as well. There's lots of creative um, teachers out there that put things up there. I haven't personally put anything up myself, wish I had that kind of time and I'm not that creative, but I look to my peers and colleagues out there who put some wonderful things and I try to find what I can. Okay, so back to our nonfiction expository. This writing has specific qualities that will make it true. So this is kind of what we were talking about a little bit more where we really wanna make sure that it's specific to something um, and comes from a source. So like when I know somebody presented earlier about having a brother, right? And that's factual. That's true. I have a brother as well. But I can't necessarily say that it would qualify into this type of genre because it has to meet a certain sort of criteria, right? The information has presented is factual and it's not based on opinions or beliefs. And it comes from reliable sources and it's meant to inform. Okay, so this is something that, in other words, someone else could find information about. So just because I have a brother and I know specific things about him that are true, it doesn't mean somebody else could look somewhere to find that, right, about him. So that's why we have to make sure that it, it really is meeting a certain criteria. And it doesn't mean to say that something else isn't true, but just fitting the specific type of, of writing or reading. Okay, any questions about that? Okay. So I want to practice here for a moment and we're going to take a look at a passage together here and I'm going to show this so don't worry you don't have to go to this. Okay. So I know this looks very lengthy and, and wordy, right? So don't worry about this. I'm going to help out here for a second. And met, those of you who've looked up inside of encyclopedias before, or inside of dictionaries, know that they can look like this and even much more on the page, right? So if I'm looking at this passage or this definition here for a Leo or Panthera Leo, a large, powerfully built cat of the family, and I might mispronounce certain things, Felidae, and the second largest of the big cats after the tiger. The proverbial king of beasts, the lion has been since earliest times, one of the best known of wild animals. It is now found mainly in parts of Africa, south of the Sahara. 
a few hundred lions constituting an Asiatic race live under strict protection in the Gur Nat Forest National Park in Gujarat State, India. The preferred ha habitats of lions are grassy plains and open savanna. Okay, so for the term lion, okay, this is a reference of where the term is coming from. And then it tells you where you're citing the sources from as well here. Okay, so this is very lengthy, lots of factual material here. You might have learned something you didn't know. Okay, so let's think about some of these questions here for that. What do we just looked at? What I just kind of read is this writing presenting facts, opinions, or telling a story? Kind of think about this. Are the ideas presenting facts or opinions, or should you trust the source? However you want to word it, however you want to ask the question, just what do you think? Facts, okay. Is it a source you would trust? Facts, good. Okay, Cyclopedia Britannica, facts. Brindle nonfiction or fiction? I'm not sure. I would have to look that up. I have not read Brindle. So, right, factual here, Cyclopedia Botanica. A fact, get, uh, thank you for sharing that. Awesome. Okay. Well, here's a second example, and I'm going to read this as well. So, I don't feel like you have to read this, but you can feel free to follow along as I read. So, we can kind of compare what we're looking at here. While hunting, the lioness patiently stalked her prey using every bit of available cover and then ran down the injured impala with a rapid rush. It is the lionesses of a pride who do most of the hunting. When hunting, the cats pay no attention to the wind's direction, which can carry their scent to their prey. They also tire after running only short distances. A high proportion of their hunts thus end in failure. And this is taken from the African Lion Species Data Sheet page, Lincoln Park Zoo. Okay. It's a little bit different, right? Might have been a little more entertaining to you as a reader. What was different? I want you to take a look, type in the chat box. What was different? In the second example, the writer used traits, right, of expository writing, but there was a common error that many writers do with their work, and there's a sentence that doesn't belong. Okay, so I'm gonna go back and I wanna see if you can pick up on what sentence that might have been. And there's numbers here, so this you can, you, instead of having to type the whole sentence, you could just put sentence one, two, three, whatever you think it is that shouldn't belong. And that's kind of where we talk about with the revision process. What doesn't belong here? What do you guys think? It's like a story, not that. That is an opinion. So what sentence do you think doesn't belong? Because there are facts in this example. Okay. Number one sentence, okay. So I have some responses that are saying two. I have the responses that are saying one. This is interesting. Now, it, it does kind of tell, you're right. It does tell it a little bit more like a story. I agree with you. If I'm reading this as a reader, it tells it more like a story. It is more entertaining, right? I like reading this instead, but there are still facts in this one. There's only one sentence that's not factual. Everything else is factual. So 
I'm going to help us out here. There's four sentences, right? And most of my responses, people either said one or two. So I will say that you're correct. And one of those does not belong. It's either number one or number two. So everyone kind of go back and look at sentence number one and sentence number two, which one is not a fact. They both can sound like facts. Okay, now, so the one that's incorrect may read. When you're reading it, it may seem like, yeah, that's factual. It happened. But remember what we said the criteria would be. Anybody could look that up. It's not four. It's going to be one or two. All right. Because if we're meeting that criteria for nonfiction, anybody can find that information. And for one of these sentences, not everybody would find that information. Okay. So it is sentence number one that doesn't belong. <laughs> I say I'm not as happy about that. <laughs> Now, when you read sentence number one, while hunting, the lioness patiently stalked her prey using every bit of available cover. So she's trying to hide, camouflage, shield, and then ran down the injured impala. So this is another animal, poor thing that's been hurt with a rapid rush. It reads like a story, absolutely. And this is probably factual. It, I'm sure it happened. But that doesn't mean this happens every single time, that exact situation. Okay, so that's what makes this not meeting that criteria. Number two, and I know a lot of people mentioned that one. Number two, it's the lioness is the part who do most of the hunting. This is something that's factual. It is usually that. Okay. Um, and for four as well, that's a fact about them. They will tire after running short distances. Okay. So a high proportion of their hunts can end in failure. So it's not leading to a specific situation. So while specific situations happen in our lives, right? Think of an autobiography, if we were to tell our life story, it's true and it's factual, right? It is nonfiction, but it's not something that's necessarily an expository text for everyone. It didn't happen for everyone. It's not something everybody could look up about your specific situations, okay? So this, for sentence number one, that is a very specific situation that just happened and somebody's referencing it, but it's not a fact that everyone could look up and cite from any resource. So that makes it a little trickier, but I do like and agree with you that most of this reads more like a story. So the second example, the writer used traits of that expository writing, the criteria we're looking for, but just made that common error of including one sentence that didn't belong. Okay. And that's where when we, I mentioned before, that would be part of the revision process, which is different than editing. Editing, we're checking for errors, we're checking for grammar, but revision, we're revising and reminding us what doesn't support this. Okay, so you gotta make sure to be cautious of that. Mm. Okay, so we did discuss that was sentence one. Right. Now, another little activity here we're going to do together, and I know this seems like it might be a little daunting, a little bit much, just a paragraph, but a paragraph could just be three to five sentences. It doesn't have to be a lot. I want you kind of just to try this a little bit right now. You don't have to share if you don't want to. If you do, I, I think it's great. We love it. Last year, online Zoom, people shared some of their their paragraph. So try to if you can or would like to. Avanov, I'm counting on you here. <laughs> so I want you to think about writing a paragraph about lions. And we just read a little bit about them and you learned some facts so you can reference or, or think about that too. And it should contain at least three of the following factual descriptions. Okay. Remember that ex expository writing is informational. It's descriptive. It's accurate. The details are organized around that topic. Okay. And you can use three of these details below here to help support your work. I'm including some things down here to help. Okay. You can also use the information that we read before, if you would like. So they can run in short distances. They don't, they can't run in long durations. 
the lionesses do most of the hunting. Okay, and if you want to mute and share something, you can. If you want to share with us, that'd be great. Okay, Abhinav, I can go back to if you want to have something to quote from too. I'll go back to this as well. So everybody can kind of see this example here too. So here's, I'm going to leave this up for a minute. I want you to kind of take a look at this. And remember, I don't want you to feel like you have to write huge long sentences. The purpose of this is to kind of get you in the habit of seeing, uh, you're right. Sophie is absolutely correct, even though we didn't say that specifically when it's going after the injured impala she's absolutely correct it's eating live animals for food so that is absolutely factual okay so her her sentence there of saying lions eat live animals for food is is absolutely correct what would make it not correct or if it wouldn't make it a true expository sentence if somebody said lions enjoy eating live animals for food well i that's arguable to say that right because i guess somebody could argue and say well of course they enjoy it that's why they do it but do you really know that they enjoy it they have that feeling how can we prove that right so that's where this is not responding to expository text. You have to keep it very factual. You have to leave your bias out of that. Mm -hmm. So that is an actually, that's a great sentence to just say. But what I want you to kind of think of, so that's one statement that's factual, right? I just want you to kind of think of what would an opening be or in a closing line. You know, lions are very powerful animals. That could be an opening sentence, okay? Lions are the only, so, and then what your closing sentence could be. Because this is just kind of a, a useful tool, a useful little practice with anything to support your students and your children when they're doing their writing. And you can choose anything that's of interest. They like cars. Start with something easy. And I say start small instead of a huge essay or prompt. Start with a paragraph. It's an easy way to just give a general response to something with three to five sentences and you're just giving some facts. Okay. And I'll share the next one in case, because the next one, um, this has some facts on it too. So from sentence one, we can't use that for facts, but what you could take from that as a fact is a lioness would stalk prey I wouldn't use the word patiently because I don't know that every time. But you could say they stalk prey because that is true. Yes, the group is also called pride. That is correct. Okay. And then I want you to be able to take a look at the... Um, just using some of these as well. These are just general facts. So a lion is a powerful animal. It has a thick mane and tawny coat. That could be another sentence. Their body consists of having heavily muscled forelimbs and shoulders. There's another sentence, right? Their long retractal claws are useful with hunting. Another sentence. The traits of a lion make it a powerful animal. That could be my closing sentence. So just quickly, I, I just verbally am, am looking at this and just sharing out how I could quickly respond, right? Because I want you, like I said, to just kind of get in the habit of being able to do this using your words. Try to get it on paper if you can, it helps, but not to feel so pressured to make something really long, okay? Even though this may not be a subject matter 
want to talk about or want to learn about, we're going to usually be presented with those when it comes to expository texts in nonfiction with things we don't necessarily want to learn or know, or know more about, but we have to be able to respond to them. Yes, that is true. You go to the other site, go back. Okay, Albanov. Let's see, this one or the one before? This one, okay, got it, thank you. He's really writing something here, I like that. Abhinav, who's your teacher at Whitman? Ms. Tamaoka. Oh, okay. Did you know that I've known Ms. Tamaoka since we were four years old? We went to Whitman together. That's how long we've known each other. Yeah, and our, and, uh -huh. I'm serious. And our brothers were friends too. They grew up together. They're older than us. That's a fact. <laughs> You have a very good teacher. All right. So, Abhinav, it looks like you're going to want to share something with us, right? Are you almost done? I don't know if anybody else has got something they want to share, too. But our fourth grader here has been very active participant. That's great. I definitely want to give him an opportunity because I'm sure he wants to share this. That's so cool. Are you good? Do you want to tell us? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Lions are well-known creatures to the world. These creatures are known as the king of beasts. No matter how deadly lions are, they are hunted for meat and skin illegally. Lions live in clans that include the lioness and other lions. The lioness is the one that finds meat, that finds and gets food for the clan. The text states... It is the lioness of the pride who does most of the hunting. Well, that's all I've so far. That's great. I thought you did fantastic, and I like the opening sentence as well. So you would just need a conclusion, it sounds like, right? Yeah, everything was great. Okay, now everything, just from hearing it the first time and not seeing it, um, went together and was factual. The second sentence you said about something uh, being illegal. Yeah. Okay. That one, I would say, I would have to rehear it. And I would say two things with that. It didn't flow with everything else from these two passages because it wasn't something that was mentioned or included. So that's where I would say for the revision process, that would be one to rethink. Okay. Right? Okay. Other than that, fantastic. Great. Great examples. Thank you for sharing okay. yours. Anyone else want to? No. Well, I appreciate you all participating in the chat, though. That's awesome. I like that. Okay. We are going to move on here. So the paragraph about lines should have contained at least three of the factual descriptions from the previous page. Like, those are the ones that I included on that one. You didn't have to. Like, Abhinav went back and got things from the other text, which is great. So we're going to compare with another model. And this is just a model to expose uh, facts and ideas, just showing you different ways of how we could approach this. I, I shared with you just quickly, verbally, something, you know, that I just, from reading this, threw together. And then Abhinav shared something even more detailed from writing down. So as you can see, which just it just depends on how you want to present that. And you can use different words. But you want to make sure the paragraph provides information for the person reading it. And the descriptions that are used in the paragraph are highlighted in purple. Okay, so this is what we're going to take a look at here. Remember that the expository writing is informational, descriptive, and accurate. And the details are organized around one topic. The lion is considered king of beasts. And I think Abhinav said that too. And <laughs> its physical characteristics add to its ferocious reputation. Lions have shaggy, thick manes. Their fur consists of a thick, tawny coat. They have a rough tongue that enables them to pull flesh from bone. Okay. And I put here, how close is your response? Yours doesn't have to be as close to this, obviously, but you could have used some of the stuff. Abhinav quickly used that kind of in his opening as well with King of B. So that's great. Awesome. But these are just different ways to word and you don't have to say characteristics. You could say traits. 
I could say, um, other words to use in lieu of some of the ones that are used here. Ferocious, I think he used very powerful. Okay. That's why it's important to have that vocabulary and be able to use other words. So you're not always repeating the same words. Right. And many of you are probably familiar with this um, website, Smart Balance. You can access grade level sample writing and scoring on there as well, as well as from our district two, what's been released. Okay, so they wouldn't be current, any, but they would be things that have been released or prompts from the past, and you can be able to access some of that to support. And gonna go back to this part. Where we don't have the handouts we used to have before, but I have some of this we'll take a look at here. So I want to make sure that when you're setting up for success here, you are reading and explaining and understanding. You have your main idea. You have the supporting details. You have reliable sources. Okay. Any questions about any of this? All right. So. This is part of what you would do if you need any help as well. You can email me as well. Don't worry, we're not done here yet. I'm gonna go, we're gonna be doing another activity here. So I'm gonna really need your support here for our chat. Okay. But I wanna make sure you can get this down if you need to. All right. Stop sharing here and I'm gonna go up to our here with our chat. Okay, so I want you to think about something here. And we're gonna do this a little bit in the chat, something kind of fun. And I, I like to do these activities because I wanna get you to be able to participate as well as me kind of seeing how you're coming up with your information, okay? So can you think, somebody type in something in the chat, like we talked about lions, it doesn't have to be an animal, we can think of something else. Something that we could all be able to reference nonfiction something that's true that we could all be able to access information about this general. And I know I mentioned before like dinosaurs. Can you type in something that we can all think about here? Any ideas? I see Abhinav moving, so he might beat somebody to this if you guys don't wanna give your information. <laughs> Dogs. I love dogs. Okay. Danger tiger. That's very specific. Off and off. I don't know if I'd be able to reference crocodiles. Good one too. Anyone else? Okay. So how about we go with dogs, right? I feel like we could all fish. That's a good one. All right, so how about between fish and dogs? Let's get our responses here. Whoever I'm gonna get more responses for. Those are, we're down to those two. Hey, I also added bears. Yeah, I did, I saw bears too. But I'm trying to think of where I'd get more engagement from people who might have, be able to respond a little more generally too. So let's think of fish, dogs, what's, what's really jumping out at you a little more. So everybody can kind of have a boat saying this. No one. All right, let's go with dogs. Cause I just think, hey, I see some happy faces. <laughs> I love doggies. Okay, so dogs, let's be factual about this now, okay? Let's not have our opinions sway into any of this because I can easily do that. I love dogs. I think they're amazing. I like dogs more than cats, but I, that's not something I could say for a nonfiction prompt. I have to be very specific about my responses for dogs. I can't say um, how much cooler dogs are than cats and how they can do so much more and they're so much more loving. That's not a, a nonfiction response. It's not expository, it's not informative. I'm not giving the reader information that's factual. So I have to think now, what are factual things about dogs? Can you type in the chat here? What are some factual things about dogs? 
that are true of all dogs. Okay, what is true of all dogs? Yes, they are popular, popular pets for several reasons, but this is not an opinion writing, right? So we have to make sure that we're giving information that's only factual. So I, I have to make sure that I can't use words like popular or what the reasons would be that would make them popular. They bark, perfect, high maintenance. I agree, they can be high maintenance, but not all dogs are high maintenance. So that one wouldn't be one we could use. My dog is very high maintenance. But that's, that's subjective because somebody else could take my dog and say, oh, he's so easy. He's not high maintenance at all. It's subjective. So I couldn't use that. Uh, four legs. So I'm going to write this down. Bark, four legs. They have fur. Yes. They, I'm going to say they have fur. I'm not going to say they have special fur to keep the body warm. But I am going to say they have fur because they have different types of fur. And not all dogs have the same length of fur. And I wouldn't say that's necessarily the reason for their fur, not like an Arctic animal with their fur. They lick, I can use that. They do sniff, I'm gonna say that. <laughs> I'm not gonna say to know who is around because again, every dog could sniff for a different reason. They all do sniff, but I don't know what their reason is for sniffing, okay? Uh, I wouldn't, I don't know if I could say they're all carnivores because like people, they are capable of eating meat, but like people, they, their owners may give them a choice of only being vegetarians. <laughs> so that, that one's not one I can necessarily say we could use. They're different sizes. Absolutely. That we can put down. So I'm making notes here. So if you on your end have something to take notes at, absolutely please do. Different sizes, perfect. They have paws. That is a fact. Because their paws, not all animals who have feet, do we refer to them as having paws. But for dogs, we refer to them as having paws. We don't say they have hands. Good. There are different types. Yep, there's different sizes and there are different types, or we, we would say different breeds of dogs, right? Because we want to use the specific terminology. And that's another, um, I'm glad somebody wrote that because it's not bad and it's not wrong. But I, I'm gonna, we'll get to why that is important though. Some can swim, that's true. So I could use that because of the fact that you said some can swim and not dogs can swim because not all dogs can swim. So that would be something of teaching them, which is a different tangent and it could still be under nonfiction, but we'll delve into the, how that would go to something more specific in response. No nails. They do have nails. They get very sharp and they scratch. They don't. It's just like their fingers. My, my cousin, they had a dog and they, and they tried clipping their nails, but they just clipped a finger and there's a lot of blood. Yeah, that means they clipped too far. So they, yeah, that's good to take them to the groomers. I try not to do it. I don't do it to my dog because I don't want to clip too far because, yes, you can go too far and it can hurt. It's not fun. Imagine clipping your nail so short. It just wouldn't feel good. It would probably bleed too. So they do bite. I don't necessarily feel like it's on purpose. That depends. They can smell. So they use, I would say they have a good sense of smell. They use their sense of smell, right? A lot of you, these are great responses. Okay. So here's how we want to take a look at this. These are some, I'm going to type in the, the box here, the terms of things that we mentioned here, that all of you mentioned. And I want us all to use what I'm going to type in here and make some sentences up, create, well, I, I don't wanna say, I want you to create a paragraph. So that means I want you to use the information I'm typing in to have an opening sentence, at least two or three sentences with details and a closing. Just come up with a quick way to close it so that the reader looks at it and says, oh, that was a good response to dogs. Different sizes and different. And 
also try to think of, I might type in some more. Here's a few. Don't think you have to use all of these, okay? Pick two or three to focus on. Because it's not about including all of the information. Remember we talked about having that flow. It's about including it to make it flow when you're reading it. It doesn't mean you're including every single detail. What is your focus and how does it flow? That's the fluency. I want you to think, um, and I know one of the responses up there had said that there was different types. Yes, there are different types of dogs. The reason why I changed that to breeds is because I know we mentioned before about how as our children are in different grade levels and they're learning specific subjects and new vocabulary terms and new spelling terms, whatever it is they're focusing on, you want to pull that vocabulary in when you can. So when I'm talking about dogs or certain animals, we use the term breeds, right? That's how we reference them having different types. So I'm pulling that specific language into the subject matter and it makes a difference in your response. So that's where I would say, Vocabulary, language, it, it's very useful. Use it as your tool, okay? Especially when it's referencing something. Okay, so we have some of these facts here that I typed in. These are all of your responses that we got, okay? Yes, that is true about the color blindness of different variety of colors. That's a fact too. So you can absolutely use that as well, okay? You can, you can even use it uh, that they can bite. Doesn't mean that they're doing it in a harmful way, but yes, they can bite, okay? So I want you to think about some of these facts. These are just facts, okay? And I'll come up with an opening sentence. You're writing a quick paragraph, okay? So have an opening sentence like, dogs are a type of animal with specific traits. That's an example of an opening sentence. or dogs are a common animal in, in many countries. Here are some things about them, okay? So I don't have to think too hard, just what's your opening? Because remember, somebody's gonna be reading this, they wanna know what they're gonna be reading, but they don't want it to feel like it's an opinion, it's factual, right? So would you like to learn more about dogs? Here are some great facts. That's, that's an example of using a different style with your writing. I'm opening my sentence with a question. That's a great way to engage your reader. You ask them a question. Do you want to hear more about that? Yep, you have a hook. Absolutely. So engage your reader. Pull them in. Give them that hook, right? Would you like to learn a little bit more about dogs? Something you might not know? Here are a few facts. This is your opening. So think about what your opening is here, okay? Because we already have the details. So you don't have to think or, or research. You don't have to go find your resources right now. We have already provided the details. Everybody here has participated and providing some details. I want, what's gonna take you a moment here is think of that opening sentence. How do you wanna open this? One sentence to give us your opening statement. Then give me a couple sentences with these details we have. And then a closing. How do you close it? Because we don't just leave it with the details, you have to have that conclusion. Oftentimes kids can get marked down so much in a writing prompt because they don't have a conclusion. You want a concluding statement. Feel free to share. I'll come up with one too and I can share. Yeah, absolutely. They are a domesticated animal. Absolutely.
Wait, can you actually put something like dogs or creatures known as man's best friend for your starting thing? You could, because that, that's a factual statement. They are known, but I would say you might need to cite, if you're being a little specific, you want to make sure it's sticking to whatever the facts are. So if it's not connecting, and here's where I would say it's not, it's not connecting. The facts that we're giving for this isn't anything to reference why they're man's best friend, right? And part of why they're known as man's best friend is because they're playful and they like to play fetch, right? They um, are very loving, not all of them, but a lot of, a lot, oftentimes, right? But this is an information that we shared. So let's pretend this is a passage. This wasn't information that was presented here for this passage, right? Yeah. If it was in a passage that you were referencing and that was information included to support that, with evidence, then yes, you could. So for this particular response, that's why I would say no. Okay. okay. Oh, I th see we have a couple here, let's see. Dogs are a type of animal that has four legs and fur. Great, here are some more facts about dogs. They have paws and come in different breeds. Great, that's awesome. I love that, thank you so much for sharing that. So just make sure, how can we conclude this? Just like a closing statement for that. That's great though, thank you. How can we close that though? Because remember your reader wants to have the conclusion of, wait, did they just end it like that? Was that the end? You don't ever want like a movie, right? Or a story you read, you don't ever want to think like, if you're asking yourself, was that over? Is it done? See, cause you're not sure. So you, that's why you want to have that conclusion. Dogs are common pets in the United States. Conclusion: Most people in the United States choose dogs as pets. That is true. They are very, very common. But remember, it, it's got to make sure that if is that something that we did reference though for some of our facts, right? So if we included resources to support that, then you absolutely could use that. Okay, so that would be something that would require more research, but it could definitely be used. I'm not saying that it's not factual and it's not something you could use. You just would have, that would be something that would have to be supported with evidence. Okay, so for example, I'm just kind of thinking that here are some facts about dogs. They have four legs, paws, with paws and nails. They lick, sniff, and bark. So I'm including a few of those examples you guys gave and kind of putting them in a sentence because those would be three things I could, I feel like could go together in a sentence about licking, sniffing, and barking because those are sort of sensory traits, right? So they can be included in the same sentence. And then I said that they come in a variety of sizes and breeds. So that's where we use our different vocabulary and terminology to say the same thing somebody else did, but in a different way. So that way you're not repeating or using somebody else's words. This is why we learn about synonyms and different types of words and different vocabulary, because we want to be able to use our own words and our own style of response. So for mine, I just would have to think now of my conclusion. These are, and I can make it very simple. It doesn't have to be so sophisticated when you're just coming up with something quickly like this or just working to get in the habit of these responses. I could say something as general as, these are some facts about dogs. It's just keep it, keep it minimal, but it's letting your reader know that that's it. That was my response. Let's see. Dogs are, oh, the ending is dogs are a common animal that are used as a pet. Okay, good. Dogs are amazing animals loved as pets by humans due to their traits. That, that is true. Here are a few of them. They have strong sniffing ability. Good. Paws, furs, fur, and most loyal. The most loyal ability makes them the best friend. I agree. I, I can't say I disagree with that. But I have to say it's an opinion, right? I agree with your opinion. <laughs> I, I support your opinion. I will shout out your opinion, but it would still be my opinion too. And not everybody would think that. So that's where for an expository nonfiction response, you, you wouldn't want to use that. 
but I like it. You get my vote. <laughs> no, there's always dog people and cat people. I love all animals, don't get me wrong. I, I'm allergic to cats, so I can't have them. Also, just from what I know of cats, and I shouldn't say that because I'm sure there's some cats out there not like that. They're not as um, loving and friendly and want to be held like dogs. So I, I like that. <laughs> so I don't want an animal that's going to run for me and not want to talk to me. Also, I don't want one that's going to come and claw at me like in the middle of the night because they can't sleep or something. And <laughs> I don't want to get attacked. <laughs> And I hear friends that have cats that happen, so that doesn't sound fun to me. <laughs> but I love all animals, so. It's, it's tough in situations like this too, because I even have to stop myself when I'm responding to things like this and remind myself, wait a minute, is this my opinion? Is this response supporting everything? And that's why I'm really glad Abhinav and some of you are sharing some of your sentences because we, when we go back and look at it and we take a, a moment to say, wait a minute, does this sentence go? Is this sentence really factual or is this kind of more a generalization? Also, does the sentence support everything else you're sharing? Because if it's something kind of like way out there and not aligned with the other facts, I don't know, you gotta, you gotta think about that then. Do you wanna revise and, and pull that out? That's the revision part, not editing. Okay, okay, Alvin, would you like to share? <laughs> okay. okay. Dogs are a type of animal that has fur and four, that has four legs that help it walk. They have fur to help insulate the heat during the winter. More facts about dogs are that they have, they have strong and padded paws to tread on rough ground. Dogs can come in many ways. In conclusion, dogs are very domesticated creatures. Okay, good. I, I like your facts. Those are great. Uh, two things. One, about the winter. Okay. Um, that would be very specific, the type of dog. No. Are, I mean, are these huskies in Alaska are, are going to need that kind of fur? Huskies here in California are not going to need that kind of fur. <laughs> right for the winter do you know what I mean like it's very specific what you're sharing so that kind of a factual statement would have to be specific to a specific dog or a specific prompt asking about conditions weather so we could just take out winter but the sentence is fine without winter well no not necessarily because you're re you're referencing the type of fur that they need because of the winter, oh, right? So that yeah. sentence wouldn't necessarily go with everything, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. And as you can see, remember how we kind of mentioned that, how one sentence, it's not that it's wrong, but it goes off on a tangent, which that one kind of did, and it doesn't make it incorrect, but it's not flowing with everything else that was in your writing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So that's why I like to do this. And, and I'm glad you shared. Thank you so much. Because as we read it out loud, and do you see, and I'm the reader, I'm hearing it, we're all listening. As we hear it, and maybe you can too, you hear how it sounds differently from when you're writing it. And I have to do that myself as a writer, because when I write something, I think to myself, oh yeah, this is great. This is great. This is awesome. But then when I read it out loud or somebody else reads it as well. Like oh, there's something wrong with it. And then it's not that it's wrong. And I don't it's want you to think like that. a little mistakes here and there. Yeah. And it's That's not even, it's not a mistake. I don't want you to think it is wrong. It's a mistake. I want you to think of it from that revision process. You're revising. Does this flow? So it's not wrong. It's not flowing with my response. So I don't want you to ever think that, that it's wrong. It's not flowing. It's part of our revising. Okay. So you're yeah. making, think of it like this. You're making changes. You're just making changes. That's all That's all revision is. You're making changes. It's not wrong. There's nothing wrong with... with so it's like editing. It's basically it's like, editing. It's like editing, but editing is making corrections, right? Take, uh, spelling errors, grammar. Revision is looking at this. Wait a minute. Does this go? Is this flowing? Does this support my response? Okay. So you have to look at it and say, this doesn't support my... It's not helping the response. Look at it like that. 
It's not helping. Okay. Okay. So that's where I would say you want to revise and pull that one out. That's all. So it doesn't mean it's wrong. It's not supportive of this prompt. It would belong in another prompt. Okay. And then it would be correct. <laughs> Gotta be, you gotta be supportive and positive about this, right? So yeah. I, I really try, I hope you can kind of see this too. And I really try to be mind, I have to be more mindful as a parent because I, I think I do better with it, with teaching, but <laughs> I have to remind myself that I want to use terms too with my kids or anyone with teaching that you don't want to use terms that are going to kind of create a negative connotation, right? Yeah. You, want, you want to build a, you want to build yourself up i i have to do that for myself too you want to build yourself up you want to build others up try to use words of it's not wrong because that kind of creates negativity right yeah not that it's not wrong it, it doesn't support this and look at the word support it's so positive but i'm saying it's not supportive of my response so i don't i want to use something more supportive okay, okay. So we'll try to use things that instead of telling each other you're wrong, it's, hmm, maybe I don't agree with you and here's why. Okay. Okay. So our words can be so powerful, right? When we speak, when we write, when we read, they're so powerful. And that's why I think reading is just such a big thing for writing. Our language, our vocabulary, how we present is so powerful. And that voice can be used in your writing, that powerful voice. Okay. Yeah. And you're doing great. Thank you so much for your participation. You're awesome. Anybody yeah. else want to share? No? I hope this is somewhat helpful and people can get some tools and suggestions or, or if there's some questions you have, please, I'd like you to take um, the opportunity to feel free to ask or or suggest to me, is, is there something I can help with? Are, are there specific things you have grade level wise? Okay. I'm hoping next week you'll be able to come as well because that one's gonna, it's gonna be even a little longer. <laughs> that one takes me, the test one I always find takes the longest. <laughs> but I really want to be, um, able to support you as much as possible. So if you, you have some questions that you're uh, helping your, your children with right now, are there some challenges you're finding uh, with their writing? If you're here, you're obviously here for wanting to get some suggestions or tools or strategies, or are there things that you're finding that are working or not working? You need help with opinion writing? Wonderful. A great resource for that for a graphic organizer, if you haven't heard of it, um, and you can pull these free off of Teacher Pays Teachers or any, uh, lots of websites, um, try to pull a graphic organizer called Oreo, just like the cookie, O-R-E-O. -E okay, and I'll type that in here. That is a great graphic organizer. My daughter's teacher even uses it in her second grade class. So when you have your opinion, you have your response, you have your examples, your evidence, okay? It's a great, graphic organizer, highly recommend uh, just printing one of those out and using that to support you with opinions. It helps with the organization, okay? So with opinion writing, remember, what's kind of cool about opinion writing, especially if you have a lot of opinions or you're really strong about your opinions, which all of us can be, it's really great because you're getting to use your own voice, right? So if I like dogs more than cats, I can be so much more expressive and passionate with my response because it's my choice. It's how I feel. But here's the only thing that where I find there can be challenges with, with uh, responses with students is they're great about giving their opinions. They're great about telling you how they feel. They're great about answering what their choice is, okay? They're not always consistent with using the evidence from the passage to support that response, okay? So for example, if we were talking about dogs and we've mentioned some of these things before about being man's best friend, they're playful, they can play fetch, they like to be more loving, okay? 
I would have to pull that from the passage and say why dogs are such a, they're a much better pet than cats. And, and here's why. In the passage, they said how they like to play and run and go catch the ball. Cats don't do that, but dogs like to do that. But I'm pulling that comment from the passage, okay? So opinions are great because you choose what you want, but you still have to pull the evidence in. Okay, you still do have to use the evidence to support why you're responding to that. So you can't just read the passage and say, oh, cool, this was about dogs and I'm just gonna choose how I feel. Yes, we can, just you still gotta use the evidence, okay, to respond to that. I have a writing problem with that. What will you, what will you do if, okay, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm hoping I'm, narrative is my second favorite, yes. Narrative is good too, because it's based off of your experiences. What would you do if you had a million dollars? I'm assuming that's what you're saying, the prompt. Yes, you get that every year. Okay. Yes, okay. What would you do if you got a million dollars? Well, every year, every year, one time it's like a mansion and then next time it's a car. And then next time it's, it's like, I don't know, a Hummer or something. Okay, well, so here's what you would have to do first, though. So first of all, in your mind, gosh, imagine what I, I mean, you might right away think of like the excitement, right? I think anybody would, excitement. But with that excitement comes responsibilities. Okay, so. Well, oh, what would I, must be responsible. Well, but well, you have to think for yourself, though. What would you do with it? I don't know. So this is where the brainstorming now comes in, right? And I have to think of that flow and that consistency and how are my ideas and my, because you don't want those ideas to go off on all these different tangents. You want to stay focused and clear. If I got a million dollars, what would I do? Okay. Think. What would you do? I'm going to write down some ideas for myself now because you're presenting me with this prompt. So I have to think to myself now. Okay. And I, this is how I work too, is, is a, writer if i'm putting myself in the writing position i'm going to ask myself questions well wait a minute does anyone in my family need help because for me right away or or myself my I, does someone need help because obviously i would use want to use that money right away to help Th that's me that i'm not saying you have to but that's what i would ask myself first does anyone need help i would use money for that first after that, do we need money to plan for the future for school or anything? Do I have everything covered in case, you know, upcoming expenses? Do we have anything major coming up that I need to put away money for? Okay. Is there, then I would think now fun. Is there somewhere we all want to go together? Is there something, is there something we all need? Do we need a new car? So for me, as a writer, because I like to have that organization. Hawaii, I want to go to Hawaii too. <laughs> and there you go. See, I mean, that's what's great too. If this is a fantasy or response, you could say something like, I want a time machine to go back in time when I got the money. If this is, if this is a response to where you could respond in a fantasy, you could do that. Okay. Uh, but for me, this is just the way I personally would respond because I like to have an organization. So I would, I would put it in those three different steps for myself. I would organize it at first. I would address, do my family have any needs? And I res would respond to that. And then I would say, okay, do we need to also plan for anything, upcoming expenses, put aside some money to have to save? And then I would have my third step of, okay, then we're going to use the rest of the money to have some fun. And here's where we would go. So do you see how like quickly in my head, I just kind of had like an organization of these are my steps. So I already am mapping out a plan and I didn't have this prompt before me. You just presented me with this. So, but in my head, I'm trying to map this out and plan because I don't want to go off a different tangent. I don't want to keep the focus on something else or go a different direction. I want to keep my reader engaged. So I want to stick to Okay, these are going to be the three things I'm going to talk about. Great, save the recipe. That's perfect. Absolutely. That's why I said too, I would put some aside to save because you'd never, you never know what could happen. Absolutely. You'd buy a mansion with a fountain. I'm sure that would be beautiful. Can I come visit? <laughs> Theme park. Very nice. 
Right. And see, there's no judgment. What you do doesn't, there's no judgment that doesn't mean your response is better. Your response is wrong. Not at all. I like that. Give some to Cherry. So I know, see, I would help the dog. I go to SPCA. Help my friends. I'd buy a Tesla. Great. There's no judgment. Whatever you would do, think of that. And like I said, I broke mine into three because I'd want to do three things. So you might want to think of that too. You might have more than one thing you want to think of. Are you just going to, because a million dollars, you don't need a million for a Tesla. Yeah, Unless this is some, like a hundred thousand or something. Right. So what are you going to do with the rest? So that's why I said you need to organize this and have this planned out so you could save the rest. You could share, I mean, whatever it is, but you have to have it planned out because whatever you're putting it towards, think about your focus. Does it meet that criteria? of responding to the prompt and the prompt was a million dollars, the Tesla is not going to cover a million dollars. So you would have to add more details. How do I conclude? Well, depending on what it is you mentioned, you could include different ways. So for mine, if I would just say towards the end, this is how I would spend the money if I was given or got a million dollars. There's an easy sentence. Or this is what I would do if I had a million dollars. So in my closing sentence, as you notice, it mentions the prompt. That's a really great tool to always remember. It, your opening and conclusion, try to mention the prompt. The prompt was about a million dollars. If you can mention it, that's showing the reader that you are following the prompt. It has a fluency. You're mentioning it in the opening and closing. Okay, you're very specific. So definitely always try to include a mention of the prompt in your opening and closing. If I could give you any tip for, for a, a writing prompt, those are two really great tools to use. Like the race car format. Thank you so much, everyone. I really appreciate your participation tonight and I appreciate you joining us and I hope you'll come back again next week. Thank you all for joining us. And next week, Ms. Strong will be back with Writing for Success on Standardized Tests. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.